So one of the things we haven't really talked about is the fact that when we receive a public key, how do we verify the authenticity of the sender? So, I mean, if someone claims that I am uh, JR and this is my public key, if somebody says that, how are you going to verify the authenticity of the sender? You don't know. Unless you actually know the person and you actually went to his house and he's the one who put the public key on a USB drive or, or something, it's difficult. You don't know whether the public key is actually generated by the person uh, who claims to be the person. So there has to be a secure way of delivering the public key itself. Otherwise, there is no way you can tell. Especially uh, when you're talking about uh, these vendors, online vendors, how do you know their public key is authentic? What if there is an impersonator trying to give you a fake public key and you encrypt something using the hacker's public key and send something? And only the hacker can decrypt whatever is encrypted using the public key. So one idea here is that public key is something always, I mean, it's just a name, basically. Public key, private key, it's just a name. So uh, public key is a name uh, used to refer to a key uh, that's di being distributed. And private key is a name uh, used to refer to a key that's kept secret. So only one person actually has access to the key, ideally. That's the idea. So somehow there has to be a, a delivery mechanism of a public key, secure delivery mechanism. And if there is a third party who can actually prove the fact that the uh, public key is actually owned by a particular person, that would be perfect. And that's what uh, this public key infrastructure, or in short, also known as PKI, is all about. So using this infrastructure, public key infrastructure, all you do is uh, you would have a third party called the Certificate Authority. So instead of um, the owner distributing the public key to people who need the public key, you would actually have uh, a company, a third party company. Certificate Authority, also called the CA. So you would have a third party. To give you an example, something like VeriSign, the company that distribute public keys and prove, prove the fact that the public key was actually generated by a person you think uh, who generated the public key. So that distribute public keys and verifies the authenticity of the party who generated the public key. So if you get a public key, you know that the public key is belonging to the person or the company that is claimed. So now with this um, basic understanding, we can look into some more details of how this is done how this thing called PKI actually works. So here is a summary of the steps. PKI, so first of all, you start with uh, this idea of certificate. So as a user, uh, when you receive a public key, you're not simply receiving a plain public key anymore if you're using uh, PKI. So what usually happens is public key is delivered in a uh, document called a certificate. So a certificate, also called X.905, is used to deliver a public key. 
uh, a certificate is of course something generated by the certificate authority. So certificate authority will create this thing called a certificate and of course uh, what you will do is as a user as a provider of the uh, public key, you have to create your own public-private key pair first. So, to create a certificate, the very first thing you have to do is the owner of the public key owner generates public-private key pair. Okay, that's the first thing. And then, once you generate the um, public private key pair, you actually send the, uh, you keep your uh, private key, however you send the uh, public key to the certificate authority. Public key owner sends the public key to the certificate authority and certificate authority using some existing well-established mechanisms verifies you are the person who claims to be actually you. So, so the CA certificate authority verifies identity of the public key owner. So this is the uh, initial step. This has to be done first.